This is the brand new Toybox Comet 3D printer. It's a printer designed for kids, designed for families. It's supposed to be super easy to use. I'm gonna show you the setup process as I set this up straight out of the box. And then I've got a couple of cool test 3D prints. I'll take a closer look at how this thing operates, how easy it is to use, and what those prints look like. <laughs> Check it before you wreck it, what's up geeks? I'm Kirk and maybe you got here because you saw my unboxing video of the Toybox Comet 3D printer. If you missed it, I've got a link in the description and up at the top of the screen. But this is the next step now. We're gonna go ahead and set up this printer. I'll show you that whole process using my phone, using the app, and then we're gonna test out some 3D prints. I'll show you how easy it is to print and what those prints look like with minimal tweaking, minimal adjustments straight out of the box. So without further ado, let's get right to the testing and get this 3D printer set up. So when you plug the printer in, you will notice this screen that says, hey, go to make.toys slash welcome to get started. So I will do that and I'll show you what it looks like on my phone. I go to the website and it actually says, hey, use the app for the best experience. So I'll click on the Google Play Store and I'll use the app, which is already installed. So I'll open it up. In the app, you can tell it to add a new printer. When you do that, you'll get this screen. Make sure you select set up your toy box because that will allow you to initially connect the toy box, which uh, of course you pick which toy box you have. Have. It'll give you some instructions if you haven't assembled it yet, and then it'll use Bluetooth. You hit connect your printer here, it'll use Bluetooth to find the printer, and notice it detects mine right there. I'll tap on the printer, and then what it does from there is it actually brings up a connection request on your phone to connect via Bluetooth. You'll want to pair and connect. It doesn't need access to your contacts, so you don't have to allow that. And then it'll show you all your Wi-Fi networks because you do want to type in your Wi-Fi password. This printer does need to connect to your Wi-Fi network so you can wirelessly print to the printer directly from the app. So it'll set up the Wi-Fi, it'll test the connection, and then what you want to do here is verify the code that's on your screen, on the screen of the printer. Take a look, this is what it's going to look like. See that code, lowercase as well as uppercase. Make sure you type it in exactly as it appears on the screen because this is the final step to confirm that you are in fact connecting to the printer that's sitting in front of you. Once you type that in, some more instructions on setting up the printer bed and it'll give you the option to print out a test print, a little keychain, and that's it, voila. The next screen will offer some Toy Box Plus options, but now it says you are ready to rumble, which means we are ready to go. Okay, so I'm opening up a new pack of filament, AKA printer food as they call it. You wanna feed that filament into the hole in the top of the printer head. That's where the filament goes, and then we'll warm the printer up. Of course, once the head is warm, we can actually get that filament properly fed in. You'll notice it goes through this whole mess of things before you print. That's self-leveling. This printer actually has self-leveling, which is super nice. I started my first print here, and this is the classic Benchy. This is a boat that you can print. It's kind of a stress test of 3D printers. If you've ever used a 3D printer, there's probably a really good chance that you've probably printed Benchy before, and it, frankly, is a very good test to see how the printer performs. So that's why I wanted it to be the first one I printed with this uh, Toy Box Comet printer. And there you go, voila, Benchy is now done, and you can see how this came out. Let me pick it up and give you a closer look at what we have here. And it looks good. It doesn't look perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but it came out pretty good, especially straight out of the box without any adjustments on the printer itself. Look inside, you can see there is some stringiness going on there, and perhaps that's something we can fix with some tweaking. Of course, that also lends itself to talking more, and look how smooth the bottom is, by the way. The bottom was super smooth on the bed, but it lends itself to talking more about the printer itself. It's not designed to be tweaked and adjusted the same way an Ender 3 is, for example. I mean, because it's supposed to be easy, and so that makes sense. Now you can tweak and you can adjust a lot of things on here. It's just not as exposed as it would be on a different 3D printer. But nonetheless, I'm pretty happy with the way Benchy turned out. Here's another print. This is called Floppy Dude 2.0. That's the exact name of the print. You'll see when it comes out of the printer, it's on the printing bed. You sort of have to crack it off. This is a good test because this one has a lot of moving hinges to it. You'll see the legs there have moving hinges. They all print ready to go, a floppy and moving, if you will. I gotta be really careful as I break this off of the printing bed. If you've done 3D printing, you're familiar with this. Bending the bed like this is often the best option because that's the gentlest way of, of breaking this print off the bed itself. But look at that, it's coming off and there it is. This guy is super, super floppy. And you'll notice I didn't really have to break 
the joints. They were already kind of moving around and ready to go. I'm super impressed with how good this print came out, even more so than the Benchy print. You can see the head there. You can, of course, see the lines defined by the, the print nozzle, but of course you're going to see that. Notice this on the foot, though. There is a little bit of a, an oops going on there. Common with 3D prints, this printer is not perfect. You'll want to snip that with the snippers and then maybe give it a little bit of sand. But look at all the moving joints and look how well this printed with those moving joints. Very impressed, super impressed. I think this is a good example of the kind of little toys you're going to be able to print from this printer and the quality you're going to get. Again, I made no adjustments straight out of the box on the new Comet. I want to know what you guys think. Did you use the first version of the toy box printer thinking about upgrading? Did this give you second thoughts or are you now convinced? Do you have more questions about the toy box comment printer? I read every single comment. So go ahead, throw those comments below and make sure you subscribe to this channel. I've got a lot more cool techie geeky videos coming your way here on Tech It Before You Wreck It. I'm Kirk.